All right, we'll just go all the way around. Everybody, uh, we'll start with you, Ant. Um, just say where you are now, what you're doing, and then we'll go around so everybody can kind of up. All right. Um, of course, Anthony White Jr. I'm out here at Charleston Southern, been coaching. Um, this is my fifth year allegedly and like eighth or ninth year overall. Um, after graduating, um, yeah, out here in Charleston, South Carolina. Right, bud. Yeah, um, I am in Castle Pines, Colorado. It's about 25 minutes south of Denver. Um, and I am in uh, finance in the car industry. Been doing that for nine years now, almost 10. Of course. Yeah, so uh, like I said earlier, I live in Decatur, a little bit east of Atlanta, like 10 minutes east of downtown. And I work in South Atlanta, in the PA and the ICU, med surge trauma. Please. Um, I'm in Wichita, Kansas. I oversee all of sales and marketing for sports construction that specializes in turf. All right, Kevin. Yep. I'm in uh, Aurora, Colorado. So I'm like 15 minutes from Bud. I'm like 20 ish minutes from uh, downtown Denver, but. Um, I'm in sales, uh, tech sales uh, for a cybersecurity startup, and uh, been doing it about, well, with this company, uh, like four months. I've been in sales for the past, like, five, six years. All right. Derek? Uh, I'm in uh, Neuchâtel, Switzerland right now. Uh, still playing basketball. This is my, I guess, my ninth season playing, and... Uh, Hopefully, I'll keep playing for like another 10. Look at that bronze status, bro. Money. <laughs> I'm in uh, Glenpool, Oklahoma, and I'm a plumbing services manager. I've been doing it about four years now. Oh, okay. Jake? Uh, I'm living in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, with uh, my wife, Jamie, and our two kids, Yara, who's three and a half, and Jacob Jr., who's two. And um, I'm a builder. Okay. All right. All right, guys. There's so much to take in with this, but we're gonna we're gonna kind of fast forward a little bit and talk about um, a Sun tournament, the championship game. Um, you know, I was kind of alluding to earlier. You know, a lot of matchups. You know, you guys had gone through so much getting up to that point um, in 2014, playing against Florida Gulf Coast. Um, what do you guys remember about that game and how much pressure was on you guys to win that game? You Anybody could kind of take up on it. I'll start real quick. I remember our first half, we uh, obviously played about as well as we could. I think we were up 15, 18, something like that at halftime. And uh, <clears throat> I, I think we all felt a little pressure. I mean, we knew, we knew it was the last ride for most of us and uh, it's everything we've been working for. And after, the disappointing loss uh, junior season, it was, um, it, 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 it felt like it, it had to be done and that there was some pressure. Then <clears throat> I remember the second half, they came out with a big time run and um, in typical A-Sun championship fashion, it came down to the wire and uh, they made it a game, but, but we held on. And at the time, I mean, it was the biggest win we had had, you know what I mean? We were, we were all on cloud nine thinking we had done everything we wanted to do and needed to do. And little did we know a couple of weeks later that that win would be highly overshadowed for the, for the rest of our lives. Yeah, man. Uh, shout out to Darius, um, Fallon, uh, be there before halftime, brother, but, but no, it was, <laughs> yeah, I, think, <laughs> I think majority of the second half, not, not the majority of it, like, but the first 10 minutes of the second half, um, we were just playing to not lose. And I remember Hoffman said that in one of the timeouts. Um, and I think, you know, with us having so many seniors and, and a lot of experience, we kind of got over just trying not to lose and then just worked on playing to win. Um, but again, I think it was, it was like the perfect storm because they beat us at our place the year before. And then us going down there in a, in a very hostile environment. Um, they put all of our fans at the top of the arena, um, mm -hmm. but um, to come to come down to the wire and and, and pull it out um, at the end was uh, very fulfilling for sure. 
I'll speak to that a little bit. The, I mean, it was a little bit longer for me, but I mean, it was, you know, four years, five for some uh, coming, six for me. Um, you know, all of us playing small time D1 ball, we want to make the tournament. And one thing that I think a lot of people don't realize is that, you know, we were knocking at the door for a couple of years, but my first redshirt year, uh, the tournament was, uh, was rotating. Uh, but then after that, for four straight years, our administration, uh, you know, headed by President Underwood and, of course, all the other <laughs> athletic department folks um, had bid to host the tournament. Uh, they sort of changed the format. So for four straight years, the tournament was hosted at home. And we were knocking on the door the whole time. And we kept coming up short, even though we were, if not the best, we were one of the best teams in the conference. And so mm -hmm. to have lost the Gulf Coast on our home court that fourth uh, fourth year in a row of hosting the tournament, you know, it was uh, the amount of pressure being on us um, heading into the end of that last year. Uh, we, we were even number one in the conference solo until the last few games. And then we dropped, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, didn't we lose to Gulf Coast? And then they wound up, we wound up tying for the regular season because of that. So mm -hmm. we had, it yeah. was, it really was a perfect storm. You know, we basically had all the odds in our favor for quite a while and we, we didn't pull it off. And then we wound up having to go the furthest way in the conference. We went all the way down to Gulf Coast. And like Ant said, you know, they all of our student sections showed up and they tucked them up in the corner and took all their noisemakers away. And uh, it was a pretty rowdy environment. So I don't know. We were pretty level-headed, though. And um, I think the pressure probably became less and less as the, as the game went on. We're pretty good at, at rhythm and we're pretty close um, just as far as how we communicated and how we operated. So by the time we got into that environment, to me, that was even less pressure than what we had heading into that game. There was just a lot that was at stake. It was our last go, and and we didn't have all the benefits that we previously had in the other years. Okay. Uh, was that, was that? Oh, yeah. I, I, I get, just talking about this kind of reminded me of some things that I kind of forgot even going into the game, but I remember, uh, like, for the, the many years we had been playing Gulf Coast, <clears throat> And even other teams we played, part of what made us such a good team was that, like, we could change our defense based on basically whoever we were playing. And we kind of, like, every week going into scout, it was like, okay, we're going to guard this this way and this that way because this is their strengths and stuff like that. And I remember going into this game, I don't know if it was, like, right before we went out or whatever, but, like, coach was just like, you know what, we're not really going to change what we're going to do. We're going to go out there basically – and enforce like our will on them and like make them bow down to us like when they're on offense and I think that's part of the reason why we came out so strong like it was just like we're not going to change what we're doing to fix you guys you guys are going to change to us and like we <laughs> we came out I, like honestly like swinging and what sucks is I think it was the first was it five or ten minutes of the game aren't even recorded because like the <laughs> something happened with like the truck ESPN. And so like <laughs> the whole first 10 minutes of the game just doesn't exist. And so it's like, it's just one of the just random things that just popped in my head. Just Funny. I didn't realize that. Or I forgot about it. Probably. I know we, we were, I'm pretty sure I have the full recording. I don't know what Darius is talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we started at the second media timeout, Darius. It was something like that. Like the first That's 10 minutes, there. like just weren't live for some reason. I, I can't remember, I remember like, something like that, Darius. Yeah. <laughs> I think Darius was just asleep until he had to check in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So fast forward to uh, after that week, after the celebration and all that good stuff, we came back to Hawkins Arena and you guys were there um, waiting for the invitation. Um, Kevin, Daniel, uh, TJ, y'all jump in on this too. Um, you you kind of get the speculation of who you may get and what seed you may get. Um, what were you guys expecting and how was your true reaction to that when you found out who you were playing? Honestly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's funny because um, I'm pretty sure Coach Hoffman, <laughs> like, called it. Uh, he just had an itch. He was like, yeah. I think we're going to get Duke. And, um, you know, you obviously don't know and – but yeah, we were at that the selection Sunday or whatever, and uh, sure enough, Duke pops up. 
you know, right after he had just said that. Um, but yeah, just excited. Me growing up in uh, North Carolina, just had an extra, you know, even more kind of excitement, I guess. But um, yeah, I just remember that. And I remember, and then it being in Raleigh too. So it's like, you know, pretty much right in Duke's backyard. And I think uh, given our distance, we were like two miles from being able to take the chartered flight, which we got on, which was awesome. <laughs> uh, but no, just excitement uh, to compete. And uh, yeah, it was just funny that that Coach Hoff called it. I think the biggest thing I remember about that, even week leading up, was how like great those practices were. Like, I remember when I talked to people like, oh, what about you know, the Duke game and all that selection Sunday? But I think the unsung time was that week of practice it was so intense, so fun. I mean, it was one of the, one of the toughest weeks because we were practicing so, so hard, but it was just so such a valuable time of, you know, just getting better, grinding with your like with your brothers. And I think that was one of the biggest reasons we beat them is because we were just so locked in that that week before. Does anybody remember the the practice we had the morning of the game? We had our shoot around was at like six, six in the morning and we were going hard as hell. Uh, <laughs> we had like a media day the day before or something that was supposed to be like our day before shoot around. Well, and yeah, and that's probably where everywhere. That's and Hoffman wanted to do like a walkthrough with no media or anything. So we woke up <laughs> super early. And that was uh, where Darius decided to tell the, the whole world our game plan. <laughs> <laughs> ESPN. <laughs> By the way, here's what we're going to do today. Start giving out <laughs> specifics. I don't know if you knew that story, Marv. Uh, no, is that what like Reggie? What Reggie <laughs> all those guys or who? I, I don't know. Miller called I'll the let, name, right? I'll let Darius tell it. I, so like, like <laughs> before this moment, like we'd never really been on a national stage like that. So you don't really realize when stuff is going to go out to the world. Like in my mind, like people are interviewing us, and so it's like, oh, it's just I'm just talking to this guy. He's not really like, like, I'm not thinking like he's writing this stuff down because like he's going to go put this in a newspaper. And like, I, I want to say like one of the guys I was talking to literally put in like Sports Illustrated, like, hey, you know, our, our plan is to, to send the double team at Jafari and get the ball out of his hands. <laughs> I'm the first bounce. I'm yeah, the first soon bounce. Jafari dribbles, we're doubling every time. He won't see it coming. <laughs> Darius like submit. Darius like submitted the written scouting report to Coach K. <laughs> so what Coach said something to Darius about that, or did you guys all say something to about it? There was so much noise oh. after the game. Maybe like oh, okay, okay, yeah. Couldn't really believe he did something like that though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you guys are in, you know, um, obviously you guys have played in big games and, and things like that, but like going into in Raleigh, um, basically a home game for Duke. Um, you know, I remember getting there that morning um, to uh, the arena, obviously not for y'all six o'clock practice, but um, getting there early enough. And uh, that's when I first saw the the Kev Jacks um, going on when you guys were up there uh, getting into it. And I was like, I, 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 the one thing I said, I said, man, these guys are loose, man. This is, this is, these guys are, are, are relaxed. And, and, and a lot of the things I was telling, because there were Duke fans around, I was like, hey, man, these ain't no young boys now. These are a bunch of <laughs> grown men out here playing. So um, that's one of the things that um, Coach uh, K talked about in his presser that he was worried that, um, because you guys had so much experience um, going into that game. Almonte, oh, um, was there anything that you were, um, you know, thinking about going into that game? Yeah, I mean, growing up, and it's funny because growing up in Oklahoma, I grew up a North Carolina Tar Heels fan. And I can't really remember exactly how I came to, to love them, but I just remember watching them year after year. So I kind of had a natural kind of hate of Duke and I always dreamed of, like, playing for North Carolina one day, playing, playing Duke. So, um Leading into it, I was definitely really excited. Um, didn't know what was to come of it, obviously. And kind of like Bud was saying, it felt like after beating Florida Gulf Coast, we were on a high um, that almost couldn't be beat. And seeing Duke pop up on the screen was even, you know, really, really exciting. And then obviously, you know, beating the, the Dukies was the cherry on top. 
throughout the game, I know, I mean, like I said, I know there's so much emotion going through that game. But, Ant, when was the moment that you looked up at that scoreboard and realized, man, we're about to shock the world, bro? Uh, you can actually see it. Jake was at the free throw line. Uh, <laughs> me and Lang was behind him. And we just looked at each other like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, like, we finally did it, you know. Like, the whole game, like, we went down – Came out second half. We're playing really well. Um, you know, shout out to Jake. I think he had 20. Big time game. Um, a, lot of, a lot of free throws. Free throw. That's a hey, 20 is 20. <laughs> shout out to Corsi because they couldn't guard a pick and roll. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, when like we I got I started to get excited um, with like two minutes left, or something like that, like a minute left. And I was trying to get the crowd hype. And Hoffman was like, stop. I'm like, all right, cool. So then like, towards the end, it was finally when Jake was at the free throw line, you you can see behind Jake, I think it was me, Lang, I think Darius, you were back there too. Um, but we just looked at each other and we like, we did it, you know. So you wanna, you wanna, you wanna celebrate early, but we also understood like the game wasn't over until it was over. So it wasn't really until the end where it was like, all right, we did it. I remember by like the first media. Like, you go into the game, and you have, like, the initial game jitters, and everybody was all nervous because we're on this huge stage, and we're playing one of the best programs in the history of college basketball. But we got all that out, I feel like, in the first few minutes of the game, and then by the first media, I don't know if we were up by a few points or what, but just kind of that overall shock yeah. factor of, like – we're we're just out here playing basketball. Like it's not that big of a deal. We're just gonna run our run our stuff, do our plan, and I feel like after the first media, we all really just calmed down. Of course, you knew the game was over after the first media. I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I agree with course. Like after, not necessarily the first media, <clears throat> but it at least for me, it was like by the time we got to like halftime, and I think it was was it tied going into halftime or. Something like that, and it was just we're like, up yeah, like a little bit. Yeah, it was like yeah, we were down three. Down three. Was, okay, I I knew it was it was That's close. Up. It was it was <laughs> within range where it felt like okay, we've been here before. We can do this with this team. Like like we've been guarding the whole first half. I'm like I'm like these are just normal basketball players. Like the only person I felt like yo we can't really guard was Jabari, but he was playing terrible. And I was like cool. Everybody else, we can handle them. <laughs> we can guard them. Like it's it's. These are just guys that just happen to have a Duke jersey on. And so, like, I, I would definitely say by by the by the second half, it was it, it went from like, oh, I think we could win this to like, why can't we win this? Like, this we're better than them. I think too, like, you know, we we were confident though going into the game. Like, we knew we could play with them, and like, it was going to be a, you know, a fight. We had had like a lot of high major wins, you know throughout the, the past couple of years before that and that year and, uh, you know, a lot of power five and all that, you know, there's always an element because we hadn't been to the big dance um, is one thing. But uh, I also think like, just like all the other factors of, you know, playing coach K in Raleigh, you know, they, which we traveled well with, Underwood and, and all them got all those buses and which was awesome. But like, you know, with fans and, and refs and it's just right, you know, there's a lot of factors, but I think once Corsi got that and one for me anyways, like late in the, in the second half, um, but I think that put us up maybe by like two or five or something, but, and then um, that play specifically stands out. And then when Ant hit that, that three uh, on the right wing, and I think that's when we first like took the lead, like those two plays to me just stand out in my head. But um, yeah, then obviously down the stretch, we just executed and finished the game and rebounded and everything. But um, yeah. Shout out to Bud for the, uh, the Hail Mary pass <laughs> that we did all year and never got it until that game. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think Marv, like you made a good point as well. And, and kind of the same thing is, I mean, we were, obviously there's a there's always a little bit of pregame jitters and a little nerves but we were loose like um I mean we you know we had worked so hard to get there and then we finally got there and so now it's like 
that that weight was kind of at least I felt like that weight was off our shoulders a little bit of like we need to get to the dance and we finally got there and now we can you know we were just we were just playing we didn't really have <clears throat> obviously nobody expected us to beat Duke except for our internal group which which we knew we could um and and you know we're out there Kev's doing his dance we're having fun like it, it was a it was another game for us that we had been doing all year like Kev said we had beat you know over the course of our four-year career Jake's six-year career I mean we beat Florida State Georgia Tech like Ole Miss we weren't it, it wasn't some new territory for us obviously it was the tournament but we were we were ready to go we were ready to to have fun and play and uh um it it, it was in a weird way it was our biggest stage ever but it it, it felt less weight on our shoulders since we had won the A-Sun I just want to say one thing about the Kev Jacks. The best part about it was looking at Duke absolutely confused as to what was going on. Because we're down there yelling and doing our thing, and Kev is all the way at half court and just looking at their puzzled faces was the best part. Shout out to Paul Bohr, man. Paul Bohr. <laughs> so when the game is over and you guys are really like there, like I remember, you know, when Ike and all you guys were walking over and hyping up the crowd, it was like, man, this is it. And, and, and I mean, it's just like so much emotion was going on at, at, at that point. So much uh, shock and awe from the Duke fans that were there. I mean, it was, you know, and then Kevin starts doing the name name. Like you guys, <laughs> you guys are used to it. So it wasn't anything that was like new, but I mean, that moment is like, they show that moment all the time as well. Um, what was going on through your minds at that point? I mean, was it like truly like the victory dance uh, to, to put the cherry on top? Teach. Yeah, I think it's basically like welcome to our locker room after every win. You know, <laughs> yeah. he's Hoffman coming in, going that a baby, and everybody's getting crazy. I mean, it was basically an extension of our locker room, and you know, it just shows how much we cared about that game. That we were, you know, a we're celebrating together as as a brotherhood, but then we're celebrating with our Mercer family. And it was just like they're like the whole experience. It was a perfect storm, and. um you can imagine every game we won was a lot like that in our locker room. So it was routine for us, and it was a lot of fun to, to celebrate with everybody and kind of be on that level. After that game, after that, you know, Coach K comes into your locker room. <clears throat> how was that experience? Because I didn't get a chance to get in on that. So talk about how that experience was to have <clears throat> Coach K come in there and, and tell you guys uh, what a great job you guys did. Yeah, y'all tell us how that was because <laughs> part of five, we weren't in there. We had to go do it. I was in there. I was yeah. like probably three feet away from him when he stuck his head in. <laughs> it was – so it was a super cool experience, don't get me wrong. But it was also really quick. He was literally like just walking to his his uh, locker room and he was passing by ours and saw us in there um, getting interviewed and kind of celebrating. He just – cracks the door open real quick, sticks his head in, and just super classy, just congratulated us um, on the win, uh, said that he didn't take us, uh, he, he took us seriously, they didn't take us lightly, thinking they were just going to waltz right through us, and um, no, it was, it was really special, I remember it was just, it was kind of shocking that it happened, it was really just nonchalant, now it's, I know a lot of people talk about it, like it was this big monumental thing, but it just happened really like off the cuff. He was just walking by and just stuck his head in and was like, congratulations, guys. You guys are a great team. You'll beat us fair and square. So. Hey, man, if they ever make a movie about it, we got to make sure it's a five-minute speech where he like cries <laughs> and takes all of our hands individually and is like, you guys have great success in life. <laughs> Gives you the Medal of Honor and all that good stuff. <laughs> So how was it? I know Hoffman. I know I know how Hoff is. So I mean, was it after that game? I mean, how how quick did you guys have to lock in? I mean, you had it was it was that game was on Friday, so you had Saturday off, right? And then played again on Sunday, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because here's the deal: we had a hotel in Raleigh. Uh, me and, and Wes saw my my sports guy, my weekend guy, and um, when we were leaving, the guy was like, "So are you guys staying tomorrow?" So this was a noon game. So I'm like, uh, I think so. And he said, well, do you know? And I said, I said, I honestly don't know because, I mean, the game was at noon. So we were going to leave if you guys didn't win. So I was like, hey, man, I, I said, can I call you? Because he was like, well, you need to call quick because these, get, these rooms are like 
going fast. And I, I mean, it, it was just so, and, and I said, I said, um, I looked at Wes and we were like, well, shit, we didn't want to ha not have a room, you know, <laughs> but so I was like, yeah, we're going to stay, you know, so, but it was just like, just insane. I mean, like you guys said, um, Underwood, the fans were crazy. I mean, they, they had three or four busloads of people, kids there. I mean, it was insane how much people they pumped into that stadium, um, for, for the game and the contest. So, um, shout out to them and, 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 and um, Jim Cole and all those guys, because, all you saw was a sea of orange. You know, a lot of the Duke fans um, talking to them in the stands, they were they said they weren't going to come. They were just going to wait till Sunday because <laughs> they had class. But you know, and it was just crazy. I mean, to see the, to see that kind of disrespect, you know, of the game. And I'm sure it happens a lot. And you know, and that's kind of segues to what I want to talk about next. You guys obviously are, are, are locked in. You know, and you are with uh, Marsh Madness. You guys get a chance to see it. What is it like come March time, um, you know, when you're watching it and then that one shining moment comes up? Um, do you guys kind of like, I know you guys talk a lot um, through the chat group, but what does that kind of feel for you guys, just that one shining moment? Because I'm sure every March Madness is, is different for you guys now. Random, but Lang is about to get on now. Yeah. He was in practice. He just, uh, yeah. Um, I would say... Uh, with me still being in it, obviously, you pay a lot of attention to it. But it's funny because in our group chat, we don't talk about us beating Duke ever. Like, we always just checking up on each other. Langston Hall. What's hey, up? what's up, guys? Hey. Hey, peanut head. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for gracing us with your presence. Hey, sorry, man. 45 minutes away. Hey, it was talking to my coach, man. Sorry about that. Golden pal, man. But uh, but yeah, we um, like I said, we don't we don't ever talk about it in the group chat. It's more so of just life updates or random Kevin coming in with random jokes, um, stuff like that. But uh, you know, it's it's weird. You know, we we think that is getting old. You know what I'm saying? We think that is getting old. But then there's a post every single year. There's a post somewhere about mm -hmm. us beating Duke, and then just like, okay, here it is. Let's retweet it. All right, let's go about it. Or repost it, as they say now. It's X. But repost it and go about our days. But uh, for me personally, I only reason I talk about it sometimes is when I'm talking to recruits. And I'm going to be honest with you, all of them are like eight years old, so they don't know anything, you know. So other than that, we don't ever really talk about it personally. Tell you, Lakeson. Um, we'll catch you up in on a lot of this stuff. Uh. Just to be talking about, you know, from the uh, a, a Sun Championship to being selected, uh, I mean, on Selection Sunday and, and then to get into the game. What do you remember most about the game and that whole March Madness um, experience? Um, I honestly don't remember too much about the game itself, <laughs> like before the game, like what we did pregame or anything like that. I just remember like specific moments in the game. Like uh, I think it was with Jake. It was like, I think maybe we were up like five or somebody was shooting free throws and we kind of looked at each other and was like, I mean, like, we really did this. We were like, but it's not over yet. We kind of like had to be like, nah, it's not, it's not. That. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, that's like the main thing I remember the other specific little things. Like, for example, Bud's past the end, you know, Corsi's little weak dunk and him yelling. <laughs> 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 but just like you call it a dunk, I guess. Like <laughs> hey, it went like, in still. Exactly, it definitely did. So it was big time. But like just specific moments like that, I can't remember like anything else. Honestly, it was it's crazy. But just those type moments, because they're like those moments. I think I'll always remember forever. That's funny. The ant just talked about that moment when Jake was on the free throw line, and they talked about mm -hmm. the hail mary pass. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. you guys are, are definitely locked in on some of those things uh, to remember. Um, I know you're still playing um, mm -hmm. currently in Greece. Yes, sir. Okay. Talk about just, uh, like I said, the, the one shining moment. Um, I know you guys, you guys lived it, so it, it's probably not, you know, it's all humdrum for you guys. But, you know, is it, is it something that you get excited about when you see March Madness, even though you're playing, but just like knowing that you had a, a special moment? Definitely. Uh, like Ant just said, every year it seems like when March, Mar March Madness comes around on Twitter or something, you see like our one shining moment or people talking about us being Duke. So it's obviously like it's still like a special place. And 
one of my teammates actually right now was on the Tennessee team we played after um, after beating Duke. So we still talk about it even to this day. So and then anytime we bring up they bring up like Jabari Parker or something like that, we're like, oh yeah, that you were on that team that beat Duke. So it's like so it's, that's that's kind of like a special moment. So it's definitely still coming up a lot. We'll quickly brush over this, but the Tennessee game, do you think that after they saw what you guys did, they were like, oh, yeah, we, we, we're we not going to – we're going to make sure um, we, we don't do this? Because you guys played Tennessee the year before, right? Yeah, so I think that was the problem. <laughs> I think yeah, if we was... wouldn't have beat them the year before in the NIT, we could have had a better chance. Because <laughs> uh, beating them the year before in the NIT, it was like – that's when they were like, oh, man, like, okay, they, these guys aren't bad. They really can play. And then – now giving them a second chance to play us again, they were really like from the beginning of the game, we're like, nah, we we really on them. Yeah. And like even talking to because I play with Jordan McCray right now, and he's he was like probably the best player on that team. And he always says it like, man, after y'all did that first time, even though he says they didn't take us serious and they wanted to go on spring break. But uh playing them that second time, he said, I think they watched our game and they were already hyped to play us before they even played because they were playing UMass. They were like, Oh yeah, we owe them like. So they were ready, like, from before we even played. As soon as the game ended against Duke, they were ready to play us before they even played their game against Massachusetts. So I think us losing to the – beating them the year before, I kind of kind of messed us up a little bit. I think Jarnell Stokes was in the weight room five hours a day after we beat him <laughs> until we played him because that dude just manhandled us. And there was that center, Mayman. the other dude, too. Jerron Mayman. 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 I played him in high school. I played him in high school. He was 100 pounds lighter in high school, and they were just beast. <laughs> 42 and, to 21, my... I think the rebounds were. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Not, not having Monty <laughs> hurt us, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. Big. Yeah. <laughs> big bad. man. Yeah. Of course, yeah, I think those two guys had like 300 pounds total on us. Yeah. <laughs> and then in the D League, me and Jarnell Stokes squared off like God, 10 times. And everybody always <laughs> How'd that go? the best player I ever played against. It was definitely <laughs> he was wrong as a box, man. <laughs> so he was like, what, a few inches, probably like three, four inches shorter than me, probably outweighed me by like 50 pounds of just pure muscle and was just the fastest densest guy I've ever played against. Like he was so, <laughs> he was so just like dense. Literally in the, I remember in the D League. Our, our goal was just don't let him catch the ball. Because if he caught caught the ball, it was either gonna be a bucket or a foul. And then we were all gonna foul out. So like just don't let him get the ball. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll get ready to wrap ball, up but... with you guys. Um as as we get ready to close, um Anything you guys really want to, uh, I guess, going forward, um, it's 10 years now, and I know it's like such a, a, a moment that you guys will always continue to share. Um, um, is there anything going forward um, that you guys just want to talk about, I guess, just uh, in, in, in summation about the whole experience? I know, um, I think the last time before, well, around the fifth fifth year I saw you guys, and then I saw you guys again, and you came back um, to celebrate um Jabri's homecoming, homegoing um, services. Um, do those things kind of like still bring you guys together um, as far as you guys still talking in this chat group? Yeah, I would say um, for me personally, it's just the genuine love we have for each other, man. Like these dudes, these dudes on the screen and those that, that aren't here right now, I mean, legitimately, they're my brothers. Um, Mercer has done so much for me. Um, not only just talking about academics and getting to graduate and getting a chance to play division one ball, but, um, put me in a group with these dudes. Um, uh, it means a lot. And Jake is Jake ready to say a joke, but I'm being very serious right now. <laughs> like I love these dudes, man. I love them. I love them to death. And, uh, I love that school, that community. Um, just really appreciate, um, these dudes, Hoffman, Nelp. Uh, silky smooth. Um, all the coaches <laughs> have everybody, man. It was just a big deal. Johnny Clark, Clark, <laughs> <laughs> bring them back, all of them. But but to for all these dudes, just to be to be able to basically live life with them, um, for two years plus all this time now, um, that's just the best thing for me. I'll I'll build off that real quick. Um in our group chat 
I got to give a shout out to C Smith and the uh, Travis Smith, the older class for sure. He was, uh, he, he made sure he didn't get forgotten about in this little meeting, but uh, mm -hmm. um, I think all of us in, in this class um, owe, owe a lot to them. I mean, we came in, most of us here, everybody had a slightly different journey, but we came in, you know, freshmen, six, seven of us all together, like just trying to figure out how the hell to make it, honestly. Um, and it was those older guys um, along the way. Jake at the time was the older guy, but um, we <clears throat> we owe a lot to them that, you know, kind of showed us the ropes a little bit and, and kind of um, battled with them before all this kind of success and spotlight hit. And so um, <clears throat> some of those older classes, I think, deserve a lot of credit that they don't, you know, they're not going to be on these Zoom calls or not going to be in the articles or anything, but we, we definitely wouldn't be here without them. Um, and the other piece that Ant said that I like a lot is in our group chat, like we, we, we don't really talk about our wins or the Duke win or, or, you know, the things that we accomplished as a team. It's, it's more just, uh, the brotherhood and the, the love we have for one another and, and, you know, joking with each other and everything like that. And I think that says a lot about, uh, you know, just the people we are and the, 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 uh, team that we had and, um, it's a special group for sure. And um, just like Ant said, love each one of these dudes. <clears throat> what you got, Kel? I was going to say, um, uh, retweet all that uh, cosign, everything that Bud and Ant said. The other thing I was going to add was like, I remember being somewhere out to eat or something and after the game like once we were back in Macon and like someone said like man you guys really brought Macon together like brought a, you know the community together and kind of I don't know I just thought that was really really cool to um, be a part of something like that that brings you know a, a city or a community just you know together in a way like I know they like Mercer Village they had the big projector and all that type of stuff. So like, um, yeah, that's just a, a cool experience to be able to do, um, simply put. I think there's a lot to be said for how the coaching staff um, recruited, uh, you know, partially by choice, partially by, you know, whatever scraps you get when you're a small D1 school. But, you know, they, they put together a group of guys that I think had a lot going for them beyond what was, um, you know, just visible in a workout or something like that. And when you take a group of guys like we've got in this conversation, plus some of the older and younger classes and, you know, everyone shows up every day and gives it everything they got. By the time that that's done, uh, there's a pretty special force at play. And I don't think that ever really goes away. So it obviously, as these guys are saying, impacts the community, impacts the school at large. And um, I don't know, it's like a, it's second nature at this point. Every time we start talking, it's, you know, things, it's like nothing's ever really left or changed. And those sort of relationships take a long time and a lot of effort and a lot of, you know, I guess suffering to, to evolve and to transpire. And that's where it comes from. Nothing comes easy. Building off what Jake said a little bit about the coaches and the way they, the type of players they recruited. I think it's special because we had a, guy, a lot of groups, a lot of guys on our team. Well, basically everyone was really unselfish and didn't really care. Like, okay, Bud scored 21 game. Everyone's happy for Bud. Ant scores 20 the next game. Everybody's happy for Ant. It's not like, oh, man, Bud scored 20, but I didn't get any shots. It was just like we were all just happy to be doing this together, happy to be trying to win and get to where we wanted to be. It wasn't about, like, individual success. Oh, I didn't get enough shots. Or I didn't get enough touches. Or I didn't get enough minutes. And – that's just the type of players they recruited because we didn't have anybody, any like bad people on our team. Like a lot of teams, like even talking with my journey of playing overseas for 10 years, I talk to guys all the time. They're like, man, we had some people on our college team. They were just like, you know what I mean? And I was like, damn, I can't really say that. Like there's no one on our team where I'm just like, oh, he was terrible. Like he was just a terrible person. And I think that's what made us kind of like be special off the court as well because we all hung out with each other. We all enjoyed each other's company. And like they say, we're all still friends to this day. It's not anybody where we're just like, man, I would never want to talk to this guy again. Like, I'm glad he's gone. You know what I mean? So I think that's what really kind of made us be able to make that special run. Yeah, like kind of what Lang is saying, like 
talking to a lot of my teammates that I've had over the years, we had something that that literally no one I've I've talked to has said has been anywhere close to the same as far as just like even not even just with the players of all of us being so close, but even with the coaches, we had the same coaching staff for I think four or five years, which is unheard of in college basketball. And I think mm -hmm. having that continuity and having the older guys teach the young guys about the culture and stuff that we had as a team just kind of helped build on everything. And it's unfortunate that some things happened after the fact that kind of messed that up. But as you could see, even after these guys left, that the team that me and TJ were on our senior year, we were right there as far as continuing the culture. And the season after that, they were right back on top to where we were before then. So I, I think a lot of it had to do with one, the guys that the coaches brought in, but also the coaching staff. And, and like, I, I like all the coaches we had at Mercer. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> the same way I like the guys I played with, like all of those coaches, I feel like made a positive impact on my life. It was a Monty. good fit for everybody. Monty and T, you guys are left. Yeah, I would say I think that I, not necessarily took it for granted, but I really didn't know the kind of brotherhood we had or how close we really were until we all kind of left and went about our lives. Um, and, it, and it's nothing happened as far as like we're still close, but being able to be on campus and we always complain about, you know, classes are having all this crazy schedule going on. Um, but looking back, I mean, I, I would do it again, uh, time and time again. These are, these guys are, are awesome. Uh, it doesn't matter how much time goes by between phone calls. Um, we still talk the same. We still love, love each other. We still check in. Um, and that's some that will never die. I think we're, we're all going to get old and still be close. Still be talking with each other. Um, the thing that happened, you know, starting from, from Mercy University was, was pretty special. Love all you boys. You too, bro. Love you too, buddy. Too, man. Deej? Yeah, I guess, I mean, what everybody's saying is just a brotherhood. I mean, from the summers being together, from, you know, basically come home on Christmas, your family, and I don't think anybody can really understand that. Um, you know, it's one thing to get to the Division One level. It's nothing to stay there. And I think the, the people on this call is what kept you going, you know, on the hard days when, you feel like you didn't want to get up. You didn't want to go do class. You didn't want to do this, this, and that. It was it was the people on the screen that, you know, got you to the end. And um, it was weird, like Darius was alluding, when, you know, the the seniors left and it was us. We had to kind of carry the torch. And I think at that moment is, is what I realized what, what we had. Um, but it was very special. I know when my kids get older and they're looking for colleges and if they want to go play, I know how to advise them. It's not just, you know, the name, but it's the – it's the people on the team because when I tell people, yeah, the wins were great, all this was great, but the things I remember most are, are the guys. So that's what I'll, I'll carry on, pass on to my kids. Hey, man, get them together. I got a scholarship for them. <laughs> <laughs> I got four. <laughs> <laughs> my, right. my little boy turns turns two in a month, and he's accepting his scholarship offers after yeah. that not <laughs> that, how much nil money you yeah got? <laughs> you say yeah NIL. not ask me for NIL money about you're Publix and costco jake <laughs> recruitment is open right yeah don't ask me for <laughs> not yet I but I, I can't let me i just want to end with this yeah, um like basketball and how devastated we were after we lost to tennessee um but i think the worst the worst of it um was after graduation I think Bud was the first one to leave. Yeah. That that was emotional, right? Because mm -hmm. obviously playing the game and and loving it and not being able to play with your brothers anymore is one thing, but oh. actually having to to go our separate ways and 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 start being adult, real adults, um, and living life and and watching Bud hop in the car and drive off while we're all just standing there, and then it was like one by one by one leaving. I think that was that was probably the worst part of all of it. Um, that summer before, I know we were. It was it was um, born center, acid rap, FIFA, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and basketball, um, and obviously in internships. But um, 
I don't know. I just cherish the time I have with these guys for sure. Well, it was an honor for me to cover you guys. I mean, I'm, I've had a chance to cover national championships with Georgia lately. Go to Mer go to the Masters every year, but this game definitely is the top of my uh my list as far as you know. It was first of all, it was my first March Madness, but it, it, I mean, what a great one to have when it's your first one. And um, actually, I haven't had one since, but that's a whole other story. But um, <laughs> uh, but it was just great, you know, just to be able to be in that environment and talk about it because, like you guys said, you guys really did bring the community. I mean, they kids were in school in the elementary schools in like Warner Robins, like they had it on the big screen, like, Hey, Mercer's playing Duke, you know? So like everybody was watching this game. So it was one of those things where these kids that are growing up now were like, Oh, I remember that game. We were, we got a chance to watch it, you know? And so it's so many things that you guys, you know, bring in, like I said, that one shining moment, every time they do a clip, it's always, when you see that orange or you see the hashtag Lord have Mercer, it's just like, wow we were a part of that like you know um and i mean i say that i was a part of it just from the coverage aspect but it was just just great things man and I, like i said i appreciate you guys taking the time um i enjoy following you guys on um you know social media on uh, twitter you know and, and and just seeing what you guys are doing great kevin i miss you uh you know in the booth you know uh we used to call games and stuff man and i think kev was one of the last ones that was here for a while before everybody kind of broke away but um you know, um, we appreciate you, Daniel, when we did that story with Bree and, and just, you know, you guys coming back. So just thank you guys so much. Langston, I appreciate you and Darius. You guys, I know you guys are uh, in different time zones, but thanks a lot.